exactly how well did they do? We finished our regular season with a 15-2-1 record, and right now I just... Just about... I, start over. Our game underway, and uh, joining me now in the booth is William Mary Women's assistant coach, John Daly. John, how did the women's team do this year? They had a great season, Tom. We ended up with a 15-2-1 record, our only losses to the University of North Carolina. And right now we're awaiting notification of an NCAA bid, hopefully here next week. Play underway here. That could have been a handball there in the box against James Madison, but they cleared away. Referee today is George Vigera. That's kind of ironic there, Tom, when you think that the most important game William & Mary had all season, really, or as it came down to it, was that game up at Mason last week, and the game was decided on, um, from what I can gather, a pretty harsh penalty decision, and there was a good example of referee that could have been a penalty, but deciding that he's not going to give a penalty at that stage when the ball could have been played accidentally. Another referee will tend, usually, not to make a call like that late in a game, in a very key game, on a, on a questionable call. That was number 21, Mark Hinson from James Madison going in there. William Mary will have a throw in. Taking it is Steve Sapinski. Throwing back to his goalkeeper, Lance Holland. Lance Holland will be the starting goalie today as Ian Peter is out with an injury that he suffered against George Mason. Right now, Madison are playing a pretty uh, pronounced 4-4-2. Well, they've got two players picking up in midfield and two pushed up. That's John Tuttle with the ball. It appears that James Madison is going to be putting on quite a bit of pressure here, especially on our William & Mary forwards. Looking to win some tackles. Again, Steve Sapinski will have the throw in. And that's Tony Dixon, a very quick back for James Madison stepping in there. John, what kind of player is he? Tony is uh, very, very um, fast, very quick, um, intense kind of player. Sometimes makes uh, some bad decisions, but has tremendous athleticism. So that'll be a key matchup we'll look for there, John Tuttle and Tony Dixon. And that's Ricky DeHaan winning the ball in the midfield for Wayman Mary. And Darcy Kern with the ball. It's to John Tuttle. In there to Timmy Larkin, and Timmy loses that one. <clears throat> uh, poor ball there from Tony Dixon as Bruce Ensley was right there to take it. But Madison fortunate to come out with it. And on a counterattack, that's number 21, Mark Henson with the ball. Steve Sapinski defending. I think uh, Craig Bauer has got a pretty decent throw. This could be a dangerous moment for William & Mary. Craig Bauer, the brother of Hart Bauer, former player here at William & Mary. And William & Mary will have a goal kick. Steve Sapinski will take it. It's a nice ball there to Ricky DeHaan. Oh, and gets a nice ball into Scott Bell. In the box. Tried to hit Timmy Larkin. And William and Mary will have a throw in on the far side. Steve Kakoulis will take this. He has a very strong throw. We're looking here probably for Ricky DeHaan. Good call by the referee and obstruction there. Penalty call there against Jim Gill. Scott Bell with a quick kick, hits it to Kakoulis. But too many defenders on him and James Madison was able to block the shot. 
Summers Hambrick with the ball. He's got some time. Looks in for John Tuttle. Well done there by Tony Dixon. Nice play by Steve Sapinski there. Madison have proved to be a fairly tough team to beat this year. They've had some uh, some close defeats by very good teams, and they've also had a couple of good wins. They beat uh, Old Dominion down at Foreman Field, one nothing, and it really was a, a case of absorbing pressure, grabbing the all important goal in overtime, and then uh, holding it out and coming away with the result. Tom Martin, the head coach for James Madison, this is his first year, has done a very good job, has made James Madison a competitive team in the tough CAA division. Tom has a very impressive background. He was a uh, coach at West Virginia Wesleyan, who of course won an NAIA national championship. Steve Kakul is feeling some pressure there from number nine, Kristen Simon the J Jamaican forward for James Madison. And there, he's a player they like to go to quite a bit. Bruce Ensley with a throw in. Nice touch there from Darcy Curran playing into Marty Taylor. And James Madison clears away. That's a great ball. And a handball there, called against James Madison. Summers Hambrick will take the kick. Heading on there is Rick DeHaan. Almost got through there to John Tuttle in the box. And that's Craig Bauer with the ball. Timmy Larkin with a throw in on the far side. Plays into Ricky DeHaan, the three defenders on him, gets it to Bruce Ensley. And right back to Timmy Larkin in the corner. Trying to hit John Tuttle, but Tony Dixon was right there to clear it away. And again, we'll see Steve Kukulis come up to take the throw. This has got to be a difficult one for defenders because it's coming almost directly out of the sun. Ricky. Mm. Nice flick there from Ricky DeHaan. Got a little bit of head on it, but goalkeeper Chris North was right there. Darcy Curran winning in the midfield there, but Craig Bauer gets it. Sensley with the ball, loses it out of bounds. And Kristen Simon with the ball. Dangerous stuff here. James Madison in the box. Steve Sapinski lost his man there. You need to keep an eye on him. And Ricky DeHaan coming away on the counterattack. But a poor ball there, and he loses it over the end line. James Madison will have a goal kick. Interesting there, Tom. Um, you know, Dixon is so quick that Tuck was trying to get away from him and recognized that Dixon was making the run that was cutting out the through ball. 
So just before Ricky played that ball, Tut checked back and hit the space inside him, but the ball from Ricky was just a little bit too strong for him. John Tuttle with the ball. Defending there is Tony Dixon, and he gets a throw in out of it. Dan Wright plays the ball, far side for Jim Gill. Marty Taylor clearing away there, gets a throw in out of it. Bruce Hensley will take it. Ricky DeHaan with the throw. Hits Timmy Larkin in the corner. And Timmy Larkin does it, gets a corner kick out of it. Midway through the third quarter in Charlottesville. William Mary ties UVA 24-12. Correction, 24-24. Scott Bell with a corner kick. Plays near post there. Tried to hit Darcy Curran, but it's danger of a break here. And that's Kristen Simon with the ball. Very quick player. And good defending by Steve Sapinski. Dixon throwing that into Frank Braddix, but he lost that one. Darcy Curran with a throw. Hits Marty Taylor running out of the back. And no one there. Well, I think at this point, neither coach would be very happy with uh, the way the teams are playing. Both are tending to give the ball away too easily and often giving it away with very little pressure on them. Some good examples there in the last uh, two interchanges. And Scott Bell with an opportunity here. Tried to hook that one into the box. Gets a corner kick out of it. And he will take it. Madison got everyone back for it. Good effort there from Steve Sapinski. Had a tough angle on that one. Gets it to Scott Bell. Oh, what a great turn. Good stuff there from Scott Bell. Dangerous ball. And Frank Radix losing that one out of bounds. Darcy Kern with a quick throw. Gets it into John Tuttle. It's a good turn by Top. Nice stuff there. Good work there from John Tuttle and a nice cross. Scott Bell was running on, not able to get on it though. I thought Scott had made contact with that one and I was kind of bemoaning the fact that having made contact with it a yard out, he wasn't able to put it in the net, but it went pretty hard and it seems by the linesman's decision that it must have been the defender who touched it. So William Mary will have a corner kick. John Tuttle will take this one. Some good pressure by William and Mary at the moment, Tom. This could uh, end up with a goal. Bruce Ensley appears to be open on the far post. They hit to Scott Bell. <laughs> Wayne Merrick keeping up the pressure, throwing deep in the James Madison's end. That's Steve Kakoulis with the ball. Looking for Timmy Larkin. Keeper's been doing very well coming for those balls. He's just uh, getting outside the six on them and just punching them clear. And Wayne Mary keeping it in, though. But Chris North right there. And Chris North will punt it away. I 
think Darcy's going to have to be careful on this right-hand side here because um, Craig Bauer is getting forward to support a lot, and he's the kind of player that is lazy but just comes into action once in a while. He's very, very skillful, and uh, Darcy's going to have to make, uh, make sure that he's going to watch, watch him on those breaks. Steve Kakula is throwing in to Scott Bell. Able to get a cross off, looking for Timmy Larkin. Scott has that tremendous ability to make space for himself in the tightest of areas. That was a good example of it. Steve Sapinski with the ball. Goalkeeper punches that one away. Wayne Mary will have a throw in, in deep in James Madison's end. Not sure why he didn't wrap that one up. I think that um, he misjudged the flight of that one there. Tommy looked so he was in a good position, and then it seemed to carry a bit further than he expected. So Steve Kukulis will take the throw in. Dangerous, Dangerous ball there. But again, a nice punch from Chris North. Gets it out of his box. I think I'd like to see Steve throwing those balls a little bit short of the near post to maybe Darcy or Ricky. And that, a flick on would take the goalkeeper out. They're going a bit too long with them. And Bruce Ensley trying to get a shot up there. Nothing on it. <coughs> but some good pressure from William and Mary. I thought that was a good challenge there. Foul was called on Mark Hinson for James Madison, pushing against Marty Taylor in the air. Summers Hambrick will take the kick. Nice play by Ricky. That's good work in the midfield from Ricky DeHaan. North with a poor kick there. William Mary capitalizing on it. John Tuttle and Tony Dixon going at it in the corner. And we'll have a goal kick for James Madison. Some substitutions on for James Madison. Number 25, Gary Hind. And number 22, Craig Griffin. James Mass with an opportunity here in the box. That's a good cross. Mistake there on the far side by Bruce Ensley. James Madison had an opportunity there. Took it down Wayne Mary end line. Got a cross off, but unable to put it away. They'll have a corner kick. They take a quick kick. Marty Taylor with the ball on the far side. <clears throat> and Lance will punt it away. Marty Taylor will have the throw in on the far side for William and Mary. Trying to hit Scott Bell there. He'll have another opportunity. 
Just about 25 minutes remaining here in our first half. Game still scoreless. Steve Kakoulis on a long throw, hitting Ricky DeHaan. That's a great ball. Just a little bit long for Ricky there. And that's Darcy Curran, plays over to Marty Taylor, running out of the back. Good ball there from Marty Taylor playing into Scott Bell. Lost that one. Good challenge there from Darcy Curran. Gets it into John Tuttle. And John is fouled from behind by Kristen Simon. And Kristen Simon appears to be doing quite a bit of running. John Tuttle will take the free kick for William & Mary. Madison really packing the penalty area at throw-ins, corner kicks and set pieces. And uh, right now I think William & Mary have got to find a way of either serving balls in at the near post and getting players coming in. Once it gets in the middle there, it's just a little bit too crowded. We need uh, someone like Scott or John to turn on a little bit of trickery and draw some players out. Steve Sapinski throwing it into Steve Kakoulis. Good stuff there by Summers Hambry. challenge there. I think if Summers had made a wider run harder than with Steve's ball, we could have had that ball played forward. He was so close there that the uh, centre forward was able to get in and stop him from making ground and put the ball back. Wayne Mary backs, slowing things down, working it around, using the field. And there's a run you spoke of, John. Summers Hammer coming out of the back. Really good ball from Steve Kukulis. Good run by Summers, but a great ball from Steve Kukulis. Nice ball from Bruce Ensley. Got into Scott Bell. <laughs> Tut drew three players across there, and uh, one player pressurizing and two players covering him. He's got to really start thinking in terms of just making, uh, making room to serve the ball rather than try and take them out with a run. And Steve Kakoulis with the throw, looks for Ricky DeHaan. And John Tuttle with the shot, hits the crossbar, Scott Bell right there. Unfortunate there for John Tuttle, nice shot. Hit the under portion of the crossbar, it came straight down. Scott Bell was there, but unable to put it away. It's a great effort by Tart. That is a difficult ball to keep Four control quarter. of bouncing Charles up. Charles Bell. Wayne Mary takes the lead, 27-24. Trevor Hershey will take the goal kick for James Madison. Substitution there for William and Mary. Tom, uh, Ronnie Rabb's come on up front, and Timmy Larkin's dropped back into midfield. That could be a good move. I think Timmy's the kind of player who can need a little bit more room when it's really tight at the back. He's the kind of player who could pick a ball up in midfield and create some panic by taking a player out where there's a little bit more room available and then committing other players. 
Steve Sapin's got a nice tackle there, but James Mass will have a throw in. Greg Griffith taking the throw. Throws into Kristen Simon. <clears throat> and Kristen Simon with the ball, top of the box. Good defending by Summers Hamburg, though. from Timmy Larkin there. Gets it to Steve Sapinski. That's a nice play. He'll get it to Bruce Ensling. He's got some time. Tuttle's drawn wide, made himself a bit of space, and he's got one against one. Nice move there by John Tuttle. Gets a cross off. Ooh. Oh, dangerous opportunity there. Scott Bell. John Tuttle. And Scott hit that one out of bounds, so that'll be a goal kick for James Madison. Trevor Hershey set the kick. And Darcy Curran takes it. And a nice move there. Greg Griffith with a throw. And Steve Kakul is playing back to Lance Holland. Throws it to Ricky DeHaan. And nicely defending there was number 23, Kurt Ludy, against Scott Bell. That was a nice little bit of imaginative play there by Frank Radix. He the player well and went forward. Could have got a lot more power on the shot, but nice little bit of innovative play. And again, good defending there from Kurt Ludy. That'll be a high kick. George Vigera calling a high kick against Kurt Ludy. Scott Bell have a free kick for William and Mary. Again, everyone back for Madison. Uh, not, not one of Scott's better serves. Madison breaking quickly. Christian Simon finds the ball, and James Madison on a counterattack. Craig Griffith with the ball. Referee calling a handball there. Some good news from Charlottesville there. Some uh, William and Mary football team ten points up against the Wahoos. That would be a great win for them. Christian Simon with the ball in the corner, working against Summers Hambrick. Difficult bounce. Difficult ball there for Lance Hall on the handle. And that ball was spinning pretty uh, viciously. And again, Wayne Mary back, spreading it out. Steve Kakul is doing a good job. Gets it over to Summers Hambrick, who's got some time. And Darcy Curran pushing forward. And he's fouled from behind. Four, 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 four. 
Open the space for Scott. Scott Bell turning with a shot there over the crossbar. James Madison with a goal kick. With just about 14 minutes remaining, still scoreless. Jamie, goal kick. Every goal that Scott Bell can score between now and the end of the season, of course, adds to the, extends his record as the leading goal scorer of all time. And that's Bruce Ensley with the ball. Bad choice there. Bruce is lucky to get that one back again. Ricky really running out of options there. Could be trouble. Counter here for James Madison. Gary Hinn with the ball on the far side going against Steve Sapinski. And James Madison with a throw in, in the far corner. Frank Raddick's coming over to take it. We'll see what kind of throw he has. Sides call there against James Madison. Well, it must have been pretty close there. I think uh, might have been Summers or Steve in the middle looked to be almost on the same line as that player. Steve Sapinski with the ball. And Ronnie Rabb finds it, but it loses it to number five, Trevor Hershey. Ronnie, Ronnie uh, two examples there of just really snatching at things. Made a good run and then made a hasty decision the first time. Got the ball back and did the same thing. Showing a little bit more uh, composure there. That's easier said than done, <laughs> I know. Ricky DeHaan nicely winning that one in the air. And Darcy Curran coming out of the midfield. Trying to hit Ronnie Rabb on a run there. Goalkeeper Chris North found himself out of position there. And kicked it out of bounds, so William Mary will have a throw in. Steve Kukulis will take it. John, it appears they're putting maybe two or three men on Ricky in the in the box. Like you said before, having a lot of players come back into the box on the throw-ins. Yeah, well, they, they recognize that Ricky is the target nine times out of ten, and they figure that if they've got players around there, one of them's going to get his head on the ball or put enough pressure on Ricky that he won't get a good touch. Actually, I think a little bit of rethinking on that, maybe uh, get the ball in a little bit, bring Ricky further forward and see if they come. If they do, see if we can get Bruce coming in behind him. One of the bigger fellows who might be able to get their head on it. Steve Sapinski again doing a really solid job there. He just very rarely gets caught out. Steve, of course, is a freshman who's had a very strong year. And Ricky DeHaan comes away with it. Scott Bell's gone away to the right. Ricky spotted him. Nice ball there from Ricky DeHaan to Scott Bell. Trying to hit Timmy Larkin. Couldn't quite get to it, though. But some good pressure, and he gets a corner kick out of it. Really does appear very difficult. You know, Madison are tracking very, very uh, fast and disciplined, and you know it's tough for our forwards to get away from them. That was a good run there, but the defender was going hard all the time. Didn't let up in concentration. That's becoming that much more difficult for our 
uh, midfield and front runners to play other players in. Header there to Rick, from Ricky DeHaan, gets it back to Steve Sapinski, but coming out is number 14, Mike Jarrells. George Vergara putting in a good tackle there. <laughs> Extra player at the back, if he can get it across, he has. And Lance Holland there taking that one. Lance throwing it out to Ricky DeHaan, being pressured from to by Tony Dixon. Ricky DeHaan playing in for John Tuttle. And gets it right back. Again, there's that good pressure from James Madison. Jim Gill with the ball, and Darcy Curran wins it. Trying to hit Scott Bell there, and George Vergara signals for offsides. I'd like to see that one again. <laughs> it didn't even seem like it uh, when it was played. Trevor Hershey taking the kick for James Madison. This will be a good chance now. We've got him a little bit stretched if Timmy can keep the run going. And that's what you spoke of earlier, John. Timmy yeah. doing well with some space there in the midfield. Now, see, th this is leading to uh, if Steve Kukulis comes up for the throw in, but every time this happens, Madison drag everyone back in the box. And uh, just they're really solid in there, not giving up any silly chances. James Madison with all players in the box but one. Steve did well. Timmy Larkin with a nice move there. Here's something that Wayne Mary's going to have to be caref careful of is when Madison does pack the box like that, Steve Kukul is taking the throw and he's got to be careful of a counterattack. Well, usually Summers drops off there and, and because Madison uh, dropped players back, you know, there's no danger of a, a real breakaway. We've got players back to do it. It's a good tackle there by Darcy. James Madison will have the throw in, taking it as number four, Dan Stewart. Tony Dixon playing to the far side at number 25, Gary Hind. But Summers Hamburg coming away with it. Plays into Scott Bell. Uh, I wouldn't have thought there was much intent on that one. Yeah, that ball spun up from Scott's foot and hit his hand. Got about six minutes to half time, Tom. The, uh, Nice for William and Mary to grab a goal before the break. And Lance Holland throwing out for Darcy Curran. Being pressured from behind. Gets it into Scott Bell. Scott had a little time on that one. Nice move there from John Tuttle. Going against Tony Dixon. Oh, dangerous stuff there. Scott Bell caught one down in the face. He's down. Shot by John Tuttle, saved by Chris North. Scott Bell shaking up a bit on the play. Appears to be okay. Nice header there from Ricky DeHaan. And Darcy Kern. Bruce Ensley being pulled down from behind. 
I think Jim Gill thought he was in a wrestling match there, not a soccer match. And so George Vergara will have a word with him. Now that last chance there, uh, that ball from Tut that Scott nearly got on the end of, that all stemmed from a very good throw from Lance at the back, and it was one of the few times this half that William and Mary got the ball and really pushed it forward very quickly and didn't allow Madison to get back and fill up the box, and uh, it nearly resulted in a goal. I think we'll probably be seeing more of that from William and Mary as we get on here in the game. Scott Bell with the ball in the corner. Amazing balance from Scott there. Nice quick cross there from Summers Hambrick. Nobody on. Bruce Ensley finds it, and that's deflected. Dangerous ball there. Chris North was able to handle it, though. Bruce Ensley on the shot. Timmy Larkin finding that ball there in the midfield. And Gary Hind was pulled down from behind there. I believe by Ronnie Rabb. Madison on a free kick. He's like a player in behind him. And we have a substitution on for William Mary. Connor Farley replacing Darcy Kern in the midfield. Probably an indication that Al's going to go to more of an aerial attack from now on and use <laughs> Connor's height in there. Touch him, Steve. And now Bruce Ensley finds some room. Keep this going at speed here. There you go, using Connor's height on the far post. Ronnie Rabb trying to hit Connor Farley in the air. John Tuttle with the ball. He had some room to turn. And James Mass will have a goal kick. Just about two and a half minutes remaining. Tom, I'd like to rem remind our viewers to check your newspapers during the week and see uh, when and where William & Mary women's soccer team will be playing their NCAA game. Hopefully it might be here at Carey Field next Sunday. We'll keep our fingers crossed on that one. Interesting to note there, um, if William Mary plays here, they're playing Cary Stadium, and of course the girls usually don't play here. They play over on Barksdale Field. That'll be a little bit of a transition for them. Steve Sapinski got it, left his man there to go over and do a job on the player who'd escaped in midfield. Steve has been uh, has turned in a very, very solid display again. Steve Kakoulis on a long throw to Scott Bell. Nice touch from Ronnie there. And Ronnie Rabbin, a nice run, yes. It's Tuttle. Mm. It's a good ball there from Bruce Ensley. Keeper's done a good job. He's handled balls quite well and he's punched when he had to punch. Steve attacking that one. Opportunity here, Ronnie Rabb with the ball. Bend it around the back. Uh. And James Madison on a counterattack. It's a 
good save by Ricky. I don't know if that, that ball looked as though it was curling away from the, the striker, but Ricky did really well to make sure that he got it back to Lance. Frank Raddix was running wide there, it was wide open. And a good boot from Lance Holland, but James Madison wins it. Steve Sapinski watches that one go out of bounds. He'll take the throw in. And that one goes out of bounds, and that's the end of our first half of play. Neither team able to score a goal. 0-0. Zero, zero. But William & Mary probably having the better end of play. And we'll be right back with the second half. Wicked son. Lance might have some uh, problems with yeah. that. <clears throat> okay, let's see what we got here. Kind of Right midfield. Who's gone off? Marty. And Darcy. Oh, Darcy's back on. Darcy's on. Bruce is on. Who's he replaced then? Tell me back. Oh, Ronnie. Who's at right midfield at the start of the game? Just about ready to begin our second half here. William and Mary will be defending to our left. Score is zero to zero. Um, something to note is a James Madison player running ahead there before the kick. Something to note is a very bright sun here today in Cary Stadium, and I think it's going to be a disadvantage to the William Mary goalkeeper Lance Holland have to contend with that. John, what are some things we're going to have to see here from William and Mary to get to get a goal? Well, as I, I said in the first half, I think they've got to really push the ball forward quicker. Um, I don't know what Al would have told them along those lines, but I think that, uh, you know, we've been so dangerous with set pieces that we've got to continue with our, our policy on them. The one thing would be to serve those balls in at a slightly different target rather than right in the middle. Keep crosses away from the goalkeeper. I think he's snagged them pretty much every time he's been called on to do so. And William Mary on a goal kick. Dangerous stuff here. James Madison with the ball in the box. And Darcy Curran comes away with it for William and Mary. Held on to that one a bit too long, though. And Bruce Ensley has called for a foul there. Against, pulls down Dan Wright, number six. And so James Madison will have a free kick. Dan Stewart will take it. Ricky DeHaan unable to clear that. Gets in there for James Madison. A good shot there from... Dan Stewart, but why to the mark? And so William and Mary fortunately will have a goal kick. That was a good opportunity there for James Madison. That ball squirted across on the ground in the box.
And Steve Sapinski takes the kick. Good header there from Scott Bell. Oh, great attacking header by Steve there. A little too many touches there in the midfield, and Frank Raddix comes away with it. Takes a shot, but nothing on it. Lance rolls it out to Ricky DeHaan. It wasn't a good throw from Lance. I think there were just too many bodies around there. Working up the line, Timmy Larkin with the ball. Timmy playing on the wing again here in the start of the second half. He had moved back to the midfield position in the first half. Greg Griffith with the throw. And he'll have another go at it here. Throws into Christian Simon. Defending is Summers Hambrick. That ball was already out. The referee's given a corner. Looks like that did go over the end line. Mm -hmm. Ball boy's way down the other end. He hasn't had a chance to recover from <laughs> a long run. Dan Stewart will be taking the corner kick for James Madison. Takes a short kick. Bill Kingsley with the ball. And a nice header there from Bruce Ensley. Gets it out of the box. Well, Madison's certainly having the better of things in this first three or four minutes of this half. Steve Fakoulis with the ball. And Lancel decides to put it away. Instead, rolls it out to Steve Kakoulis. Plays it to Steve Sapinski, who's got some room here on our near side. Up the line to Timmy Larkin. That's some nice work there by Craig Griffith in the midfield. Darcy's been a little bit lazy with his tracking there. A better ball from that player, and oh, what a good effort. Fine shot there by Frank Raddix in the box. Shot by Frank Raddix for JMU. I was saying there, Tom, I think uh, Darcy was a bit lucky there because uh, he didn't track that fellow running down the outside as well as he should have, and the ball played out to him. It wasn't a very good ball. He was able to get a, get a foot on it and intercept it. But he's got to be at work a lot harder at tracking there. William Mary, a bit sleepy here in the second half. James Madison taking advantage of it. And Frank Raddox has called for a foul there. That's the second time, at least, that um, the number 11 has kicked the ball away there. And that's kind of petty stuff that I wouldn't expect George to let go much more. Ricky DeHaan, the Trying to play in there, good defending. Mark Henson comes away with it. William Merrill, some sloppy play here. Right now, there's certainly a lot more enthusiasm emanating from the Madison ranks than from uh, the tribe. I think we really need to pick things up. Okay. And Christian Simon on a dangerous counterattack. There was a timely uh, touch on that pass from Steve Kakoulis there. Summers caught in trouble. Again, I think it was the... Lance could have been a little bit more careful with that throw. Is there really pressure on? I wouldn't want to see the ball played out too much at the moment, the way with uh, Madison with their tails up. And so, indeed, Lance decides to punt that one. Well, they're winning it everywhere right now. And again...
That ball just went over the line, so Wayne Mary will have a throw in. Steve Sapinski playing into Scott Bell. Scott pulled down from behind by number 12, Bill Kingsley. And so Summers Hamrick will take the kick for William and Mary. Some space open on the near side. Nice ball there. Ricky DeHaan touches it back. Kind of wanted a little bit too much, too much time on that. And Christian Simon clears away for James Madison. Running on is Mark Henson, but Steve Kukulis was right there. Lance throwing it up to Steve Kukulis. Good pressure there from Tony Dixon and an opportunity here for James Madison. He has a shot. Lance Hahn and I'm able to hold on to it, but he grabs it. Good hard shot there from Tony Dixon. Saved by Lance Holland on a Tony Dixon shot. Lance rolls it out to Steve Sapinski. And Darcy Curran with the ball. That's a bad tackle there. That's got a, I think George is going to have to get hold of that kind of tackle. He was a long way away from the ball there. He just kicked Darcy. Kristen Simon, the person committing the foul there. Quickness of Dixon there, catching score. What a great tackle. Great defending there by Tony Dixon. Plays up for Dan Stewart, but Wayne Mary was defending nicely on the play. I think right now uh, that we're really missing Ricky in midfield. He's having to stay back and cover for um, Marty going out. That's a terrible ball from Summers. Frank Raddix with the ball. Bruce Ensley is defending. And Frank unable to keep up with that, so Wayne Mary with the throw in. Throwing for William and Mary, throws into Timmy Larkin. Early. Timmy Larkin on the quick throw to Bruce Hensley, who was open in the corner. Nice move there, but it just gets ahead of him. And that ball was out of bounds, so William and Mary will have a corner kick. William and Mary celebrates homecoming in Charlottesville, winning by a score of 41 37. Score just announced Wayne Mary Tri football team beats UVA at their homecoming. James Madison clearing away there. Connor Farley will take the throw in. Good stuff there from Connor Farley. Nice tackle there. For, uh, he's Darcy called for a foul there. James Madison on a free kick. Trevor Hershey taking it. And Connor Farley with the ball plays back to Lance Holland. 
Steve Sapinski being pressured, gets it back to Lance. That's a poor throw there from Lance Holland. Lance threw that one into Steve Sapinski, had a couple players on him. John Tuttle with the ball. Gets around behind Tony Dixon. And Trevor Hershey was there, so Wayne Mary will have a corner kick. Some substitutions on. Marty Taylor comes back in the game for William and Mary. And for James Madison, number two, Eric Miller. Yeah, I was talking to Ricky there. You know, Ricky certainly seemed frustrated. Uh, there, um a few times since the, the second half began. Uh, he's making uh, runs for the ball, not getting it, and he's kind of showing his frustration at not getting the ball. Playing a little bit too far back, I'd like to see him push up more and see if he can uh, create some openings. John Tuttle with a corner kick right there at Bruce Ensley. Over the bar, James Madison with a goal kick with just about 30 minutes remaining in the game. Still scoreless. I talked to Mike Flood before the game, Tom, and uh, Mike thought that it might be a good idea to push Steve Kakula forward in the midfield and play Ricky at sweeper, um, you know, especially if things weren't going that well for us today. So it'll be interesting to see if that's a, a possibility that Al uses. Chris North set the kick for James Madison. James Madison coming with it in the midfield. That's Frank Raddix playing into Greg Griffith, but was unable to handle it. Steve Sapinski comes away with it. And that will be a throw-in for James Madison. Greg Griffith will take it. And George Vigera moves him back. That's wide, and so Wayne Mary will have a goal kick. Steve Pakulis pushes it up to Summers Hambrick. And Connor Farley comes away with it. Into Timmy Larkin. Summers Hambrick trying to hit Timmy Larkin. And Bill Kingsley hits that one out of bounds. Connor Farley throwing into Bruce Ensley. Chris North punts it away. Good communication there from Lance. Made Steve certain that Lance was going to come and get that one. Good touch there from Darcy Kern, who 
left it for John Tuttle. Plays into Connor Farley, and Connor loses that one. Trevor Hershey with the ball. And Lance Holland right there to take it. With a quick throw out to Marty Taylor. Pushes up the line to John Tuttle. And again, nicely defending there is Tony Dixon, who's had a good second half here so far going against John Tuttle. But finds himself out of position, so John Tuttle with a counterattack. Then Kristen Simon defending there. That's Bill King Kingsley with the ball. Summers Hamburg with the ball coming out for William and Mary. Looks for Bruce Ensley running through the middle, but wasn't able to hit him. And that ball goes out of bounds, so Summers Hamburg will take the throw in for William and Mary. Instead, he'll leave it for Steve Kakoulis to take. Steve throwing up the line for Bruce Ensley. And Connor Farley has called for the foul there as he was tracking back against Greg Griffith. Bill Kingsley set to kick for James Madison. And that appeared to be offsides there, and indeed it was. Summers Hamrick with some time. <clears throat> nice stuff there by Scott Bell. And George Vergara calls a foul there against number 12, Bill Kingsley. And so Wayne Mary with a free kick deep in James Madison's territory. Scott Bell will take it. Looks for the far post for Bruce Ensley. And Darcy Curran keeps it alive and gets a corner kick out of it. Substitution off of William Mary is Ricky DeHaan. He replaces Bruce Ensley. Back in the game, it's Rick DeHaan for William and Mary. John Tuttle set the kick for William and Mary. Looks far post for Ricky DeHaan. That went over the bar. James Madison will have a goal kick. Trevor Hershey set to kick. Now, Ricky's let the player he was supposed to be marking go there. Steve Kukul is playing far field to Steve Sapinski. Plays a nice ball there into Scott Bell. 
Hmm. Unlucky there, Scott loses that one off his foot, so James Maz will have a goal kick. <clears throat> Substituting for JMU, Craig Brown, Bill Kingsley, and Jim Gill. Uh, putting Craig Bauer up front. See how he does against Summers. And Craig Bauer called for the foul there as he pulled down Ricky DeHaan. Marty Taylor works into John Tuttle, who hits a nice touch there to Darcy Curran. Tracking back by Darcy then. And James Madison comes out with it. Nice ball there from Frank Raddix. kick here for James Madison. Jim Gill will take it. And we have a substitution on for William & Mary as Ronnie Rabb comes into the game. Ron Rabb back in the game. Replacing Darcy Curran. Clearing away with Steve Kakoulis, but James Madison keeps it alive. Shot there from Craig Griffith, but well over the bar. So William and Mary will have a goal kick. That's Craig Griffith on the shot. <laughs> Steve Sapinski set the kick. and putting on some pressure here against William and Mary. I think Steve Sapinski uh, pointing out to the lines person there that that ball was out, and uh, there have been two or three similar to that, and he, I think, I thought most of them were out. But I would say that she's probably got a better view than I have, but maybe not a better view than Steve Sapinski. <laughs> Jim Gill taking the kick for James Madison, and that was a dangerous ball. And Madison still with the ball, deep in Wayne Mary's end. Nice stuff there from Ricky DeHaan. Finds Ronnie Rav. That one could have been called out of bounds, too. Marty Taylor with the ball in the midfield, plays over to Connor Farley. Connor Farley with the ball, plays to Scott Bell. Scott Bell works for some room and gets a cross off, but no one there. And Tony Dixon clearing away for James Madison. Summers Hambrick playing into Marty Taylor, and he finds it right back. Nice run there from Connor Farley. Gets it into John Tuttle in the box. And James Mass with a throw in on the far side. Taking it will be number 22, Greg Griffith. Turn by Summers. Well, 
Yeah. And it's really been apparent that the quality of passing under pressure has really it hasn't been quite good enough. And as a result, you know, they, they, what look like promising attacks just don't keep going because the ball is a little bit too difficult, especially against a team that's that's pressurising as much as Madison and tracking as hard as they are. James Madison with a free kick deep in Wayne Mary's end. Jim Gill taking it and Lance Holland right there. Dangerous stuff yeah. there. There's real danger there, uh, Tom, because uh, the goalkeeper, once uh, he releases it, uh, the ball cannot be played, he cannot pick it up again unless it leaves a penalty area and it's played by another player. So that one, Steve, couldn't play it back to him. There was real danger. Sapinski set the kick for William and Mary. Steve Kakul is playing that one out of bounds. Griffith taking the throw on the far side. Mike Terrell's cleared that one out of bounds for Madison. And so Steve Sapinski taking the throw for William and Mary. Sapinski playing up the line to Marty Taylor. But Marty unable to do anything with that. He goes out of bounds. James Madison on the throw in. Tony Dixon with the ball. And a straight pass there as well. And so William and Mary will have a goal kick with just about 15 minutes remaining. Well, certainly so far, Tom, this has been a, a very lackluster second half performance from William and Mary. And uh, we've got to think in terms of two 10-minute overtimes if the score stays the same. And I certainly hope that one of the two teams can liven it up a little bit. You know, uh, there is nothing on this game right now. There's just pride at stake the, uh, during midweek. That uh, win by George Mason over Richmond clinched the CAA for them in the automatic bid. So now uh, neither of these teams uh, are in contention for playoff at this point. That really is a pity because I think the uh, William and Mary's displays throughout most of the season, apart from the one or two performances, have been very good. And it's a pity it came down to um, that one game last weekend up at Mason and uh, a pretty harsh penalty decision that decided it. As, as Scott Repke noted in the pregame talk, there are some things still at stake here for William and Mary, some personal records and some team records to be set. But of course, that incentive is not nearly as great as trying to get in the NCAA tournament. I was thinking uh, before that substitution, I'd like to see Ali, and I think someone with uh, quick feet and the ability to move the ball quickly uh, would help us out 
especially up around the edge of the attacking third and see if uh, Ali can get up there and play some little one-twos and make some things happen. Chris North, the goalkeeper for James Madison with the ball. Punts it away. And Ricky DeHaan nicely winning that one in the air to John Tuttle and almost got that through to John. Dangerous stuff there. Ronnie Rabb putting some pressure on the goalkeeper. Good work there from Ali. Unlucky. Had a difficult, difficult ball to handle there. Mike Durrells lost the ball there, and Timmy Larkin comes away with it for Wayman Mary. Nice move there from Timmy Larkin, and a shot just wide. And James Madison will have a have a goal kick. It was a good run from John Tuttle there. When Timmy went at the Tony Dixon, it was a one against one situation, and John Tuttle ran around behind him for overlap, and Dixon faded outside to cut to cover that run and let Timmy therefore get inside him. That was a good good try. Steve Kakoulis with some pressure being put on him. Steve was a little bit hasty there. Having drawn uh, Craig Bauer in, he could have still knocked the ball back to Lance, but he didn't get a very good clearance off. And indeed, Marty Taylor was held down there by Frank Radix. That has to be about the fifth time that a player has kicked the ball away unnecessarily. I think the referee should take action this time. And George Vergara stops the clock. What's he? I believe he's going to have a word with John Tuttle. I'm not sure. Maybe John had something to say about balls being cleared away like that. have a war with Scott Bell as well. Maybe he's just telling both teams to stop clearing it away, but it appears to me that James Madison is the only team that's been doing that. I mean, uh, there might have been something off the ball there, either some words going on or uh, a little bit of retaliation off the ball. Whatever. Summers Hambrick takes the kick for William and Mary. Sapinski, nice ball there to Ricky DeHaan. But right there was Trevor Hershey defending. The linesman on this side was signaling for that. I find that amazing. He's about 60 yards away from it, and the referee's 10 yards away, and he's trying to make the referee's decision for him. And it wasn't offside. It was whether it was a dangerous uh, a high kick or not. Steve Kokoulis will take the throw in for William & Mary. John Tuttle attempting a bicycle kick there. Then Craig Bauer comes away with it for James Madison. Frank Raddix with the ball for James Madison. And a nice header there from Timmy Larkin. And that'll be a handball called against Timmy Larkin there. <laughs> Trevor Hershey, Hershey taking it. An unchallenged header there. 
And that ball just knocking around in the box. Nice save there from Lance Holland. That was a very good save by Lance. Bad defending all round, though, by William and Mary. Ricky was close enough, should have gone up with that, with the cross. And then when the ball came down, there were two Madison players who could leave it to each other, see who was going to get the shot off. But an excellent save from Lance. Craig Bauer was the person who took the shot, and he'll take the corner kick. Craig Bauer with the ball. Plays for Frank Raddix, who has a shot but that's well wide. Steve Sapinski is set to kick for William & Mary with just about eight and a half minutes remaining, still scoreless. Foul called against Timmy Larkin, their dangerous play. And Trevor Hershey on a quick kick. Nice ball there from Steve Sapinski. Gets it to Ronnie Rabb. And Ronnie pulled down from behind by Craig Bauer. I actually thought that was more a case of Ronnie treading on the ball there before Bauer made contact with him. Mm. Craig Bauer is open on the far side. But unable to get it to him. Summers Hambrick. And Jim Gill being pressured from Ricky DeHaan. And Ricky DeHaan called for a foul there. Bill Kingsley will take the kick. being knocked around. Steve Sapinski comes away with it, plays to Ali Gassimi. He's got a little bit of room ahead of him. Plays for John Tuttle. John Tuttle, top of the box. Takes a shot, and that's wide. Substitution on for William & Mary is Doug Anakin replacing Timmy Larkin. In the game now for William & Mary is Doug Anakin. Ricky DeHaan and Steve Kukulis nicely defending. Ronnie Rabb with the ball, and he's got some room ahead of him. Tried to hit Scott Ooh. Bell, but it's too much traffic there. Too condensed altogether. That's six players running in pretty much the same space. Dangerous stuff here. Kristen Simon on a break. But lost that off his foot. Lance Holland was able to get it from him. Nice header there from Ronnie Rabb. Craig Bauer with the ball for James Madison. And Summers Hamrick with the ball, and he's got some space. Nice header there from Tony Dixon. Dan Wright playing to Christian Simon, who gets around in behind Marty Taylor. Lost his footing, though, and so William & Mary will have a goal kick. 
Substitution on for James Madison. Dan Stewart in for James. Is number four, Dan Stewart. Steve Sapinski set the kick. That's Doug Anakin with the ball for William and Mary. Plays into Ricky DeHaan, who's able to turn. Keeps with it, and he is fouled from Trevor Hershey from behind. About three and a half minutes remaining here. William Mary with a free kick. An opportunity here to use a set play. Two players set up over the ball, Scott Bell and John Tuttle. Referee signaling the James Madison wall to move back. Must be 10 yards away. Good work from Summers. Hambrick holds onto the ball. Too close. Trying to hit Scott Bell there. Actually, I was saying that was too close. Keeper did really well there. He, he gathered that ball out near the penalty spot. He's done a good job. Chris North punts it away. And Steve Sapinski pushing it forward. Gets it to John Tuttle. John having a shot there, just wide. Trevor Hershey set to kick for James Madison. Under two minutes remaining. And as John mentioned before, if it stays tied, we'll go into two 10-minute overtime periods. Steve Sapinski with the ball. Dangerous stuff there. Doug Anakin going down on the rail that lines the track here at Cary Stadium. But he's okay. Christian Simon with the ball for James Madison. Ricky wasted that one. He probably should have held on to that ball. Cool is playing into Ricky DeHaan. And that ball was out of bounds, so William and Mary will have a throw in. That's a great touch from Scott. And Ricky DeHaan with a shot. But Chris North right there to take it. And Ronnie Rabb with the ball. Marty Taylor playing it in, time running out. Chris North with the ball. Ricky DeHaan, nice header in the midfielder. And that is the end of regulation play. We'll go into two 10-minute overtime periods now. The score is 0-0. Zero zero. Neither team able to put one away.
And John, for those not familiar, what will the game stay as a tie at the end of the two overtime periods if no one scores? Yeah, yeah. Well, and from the Colonial uh, League point of view, the uh, both teams would get one point. And so Coach Albert will have a word with his squad in hopes to get something going here. What a load of rubbish. What a load of rubbish. Just about ready to begin our first overtime period. William Mary will be defending to the right, James Madison to the left. Some people back in for William Mary, Darcy Curran back in the game, and Bruce Ensley. Interesting kickoff play by the looks of it from JMU, three players. They did this in the first half, looked to play the ball over the back of the left back, right back, left back rather. But Darcy Curran able to handle it. And John Tuttle with the ball. To Ricky DeHaan, plays a nice ball to Bruce Ensley. Into Timmy Larkin. Timmy Larkin, top of the box, brings it in. Has a shot, nice save there from the goalkeeper, Chris North. Tim Larkin on the shot. But some good build up there from William and Mary, a nice attack. It really was from, from Ricky digging that ball out in midfield and getting it quickly out to the right. And Timmy, a good run, got the nice bounce when he was tackled, but went well and Scott Bell was right there for the rebound if the goalkeeper hadn't recovered. Chris North did a good job to hold on to that shot. Bruce Ensley called for a dangerous play there. Bill Kingsley will take it. That was, uh, that was a pretty reckless challenge there by uh, Dan Wright. Completely unnecessary. And Marty Ta Taylor was fouled from behind on that play. So Summers Hamrick taking the kick for William and Mary. Looking for John Tuttle. And Kurt Ludy doing a good job of backing up Tony Dixon there. Good turn there from John Tuttle. Good recovery by Dixon. He's been uh, pretty dogged all day and has given uh, Tut a tough time. John Tuttle will take the kick for William and Mary. And Chris North right there to take that one. Darcy Kern in the midfield, but lost that one out of bounds. Ball boy getting a workout here on his near side. Referee stops the clock. James Madison will have a throw and Craig Bauer will take it. <clears throat> Frank 
Mike Raddix with the ball for James Madison. Plays to the far side, and that player was offsides. Number 20, Jim Gill, called for offsides, and so William and Mary will have a free kick. And Lance will kick it away. Darcy Curran plays into Scott Bell. Being pressured, gets it over to Timmy Larkin. And again, Timmy takes him on one for one in the box. Unlucky there, number 23, Kurt Ludy blocking the shot. And Trevor Hershey will take the kick for James Madison. Good touch from Steve, good control. Good tackle. Foul called against William and Mary there. and throwing players forward. John Tuttle with the ball for William and Mary. Again defending is Tony Dixon. John takes it in and has a shot, but not much on it. Chris North able to take it. Darcy Curran plays it back to Lance. Kurt Ludy defending against Scott Bell. And he's done a good job today against Scott. Missed kick there from Chris North. And so Bruce Ensley will take the throne for William & Mary. <laughs> Summers Hambrick taking the throw in for William & Mary. Christian Simon with the ball for James Madison. Gets it back to Dan Wright. Trying to hit Craig Bauer on the far post, but he was called for offsides. Pinsky with the ball for William and Mary. Dangerous stuff here. That's Gary Hinn with the ball for James Madison on a good shot, but Lance Holland right there. Saved by Lance Holland. <laughs> and Steve Kakoulis is pulled down from behind. And 
Marty Taylor with some time. Plays in the John Tuttle. And Bruce Ensley keeps with it. Defending his heart back, his Craig back, excuse me, and Bruce Ensley gets around him. Nice shot there from Ricky DeHaan, and it hits the post. Great effort from Ricky. And Kurt Ludy comes away with it for James Madison. And Ricky is limping a little bit after that shot. I think we had a... Scott Bell with the ball for William and Mary. And defending there is Dan Wright. Gets it away from him. And Frank Raddix with the ball for James Madison. One at the back. One at the back. And Craig Bauer was free there, but wasn't able to catch up with it. Darcy Kern with the ball in the midfield. Plays over to Bruce Hensley. And a poor ball there. Lisa Pinsky trying to hit John Tuttle. And that is the end of our first overtime period. Score still 0-0. Zero zero. And both teams will switch ends and go at it again for another 10 minutes. Yeah. I think. Yeah, you can talk. What's that? <laughs> Not much. Are you going to ask for expert commentation here? I just... Roll, we're rolling? <laughs> 22. Play the maximum. Just about ready to begin our last overtime period. Neither team able to score in the first one, and the score still remains 0-0. Zero to zero. The team switch ends. William & Mary will be to our left, James Madison to the right. I'd like to take one last opportunity, Tom, to uh, ask all the viewers to check your newspapers during the week and see where William & Mary women's soccer team are going to be playing their NCAA game next week. Hopefully it's going to be right here at Carey Field. And so William and Mary will have the kickoff here. Marty Taylor with the ball in the midfield. Plays back for Steve Sapinski. Lance Holland and Steve Kukulis working it. And Lance will punt it away. Nice ball there. Oh, Ricky DeHaan just losing that to Trevor Hershey. Sensley and Jim Gill going out there on the touch line, but James Madison comes away with a throw in. Steve Kakul is taking the throw for William and Mary, throwing up the line for Ricky DeHaan.
and Frank Raddix playing James Madison trying to hit number six, Dan Wright. This uh, throwing from this position will be extra dangerous now. If they went for the long one, oh my goodness. Frank's Raddix with a dangerous shot there in the box. I think the William and Mary defense was all getting back there looking for a long throw and left uh, Raddix free there. Frank Raddix, a midfielder for James Madison, who's done quite a bit with the ball here in this game. Steve Sapinski set to kick for Wayman Mary. And George Vergara signaling for a foul there against Dan Wright, who had Ricky DeHaan wrapped up. Summers Hamprick set the kick. Keeper's a long way off his line. He's out on the edge of a six-yard box. And Chris North set the kick for James Madison. Foot was up a bit high there, but the referee's let it go on. An easy ball in field there to Ricky DeHaan. He was wide open. And I think Bruce spotted him. Steve Kukul is set to throw it in for Wayman Mary. Looking for Ricky DeHaan. An opportunity there as the ball rolls around the box. But no one able to get a foot on it. And so Chris North wraps it up. Look like Scott just failed to make contact with that, the first touch from Ricky. Bill Kingsley with the ball for James Madison. And Frank Raddix with the ball again in the midfield. He's had a good game, Raddix. He's been really working hard in there, keeping things going for Madison. They've got a spare player around the back now. That's Jim Gill on the cross. And Ricky DeHaan called for a push from behind. That was a pretty feeble call. The linesman made that. Jim Gill will take the kick for James Madison. James Madison keeping alive in the box. Got a shot off there. That was wide, but James Mass will have a corner kick. Connor Farley. Some substitutions on for Wayman Mary. Connor Farley and Ali Gassimi. Hmm. And Wayman Mary will have a goal kick with just about four minutes remaining in the game. Christian Simon with the ball, losing it. As Summers Hamburg was defending, and James Madison will have a throw in. Craig Bauer coming over to take it.
Danger stuff there, and a the ball drops in the box. I don't believe that referee calling a foul there. No goal. As that ball went in the net, but I believe Christian Simon was called for a foul, pushing against the goalkeeper, Lance Holland. And Steve Sapinski takes the kick for Wayman Mary. That one goes out of bounds, so James Mass will have a throw in. And Connor Farley gets a throw in. Steve Kakoulis throws up the line, trying to hit Timmy Larkin but un unable to, and Bill Kingsley comes away with it. Frank Raddick's playing a nice ball there. Dan Wright with the shot, just over the crossbar, so Wayman and Mary will have a goal kick with about two minutes remaining. And someone's going to have to do something quick here. This one's going to go down as a tie. Yeah. Steve Sapinski, a poor kick there. And Ricky DeHaan with the ball in the midfield. This could be the last opportunity here for Wayman Mary. Ali Gassimi finds it. At the top of the box. But he loses it, and James Madison clears it away. And Summers Hambrick trying to hit John Tuttle, but Tony Dixon mm -hmm. got ahead on it. Quick kick. Frank Raddick's losing that one out of bounds. Referee stops the clock with probably under a minute remaining. And Craig Bauer with all kinds of time in the midfield, pushing forward. Gets it to the top of the box. And gets a shot up, but Lance Holland able to wrap that one up. And that's the end of our game. Our final score, Wayman Mary 0, James Madison 0. And it appeared to me that neither team really came out fired up in the overtime period and wanted to take the game. And so it goes down as a tie, 0-0. Zero to zero. And for John Daly, my name is Tom Repke. Thank you for joining us this season and for this game. I was watching football, man. <laughs> I know, really. It's exciting.